case studies are kind of questions that not only prepare you for the certifications like AZ-104 but also take your overall cloud understanding to a whole new level. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Once again today, here I am with a case study kind of question on AZ-104. This is our part 4 on AZ-104 case studies. If you have missed watching the earlier 3 parts, I highly recommend you to watch them. Case studies my friend are not easy and you need a lot of practice to master them. Links for the earlier 3 parts are right there in the description box. So let's begin with one more interesting case study. So let's begin our case study with the overview section. The section says that Blackboard Incorporations is a consulting company that has a main office in Montreal and two branch offices in Seattle and New York. The Montreal office has 2000 employees, the Seattle office has 1000 employees and the New York office has 200 employees. All the resources used by Blackboard are hosted on premises. Blackboard creates a new Azure subscription. Then the question says that Azure Active Directory tenant uses a domain named Blackboard on Microsoft.com. The tenant uses the premium P1 pricing tier. Here we can see that we have the information about the existing environment. Let's read it out. It says the network contains an Azure Active Forest named Blackboard.com. All the domain controllers are configured as DNS servers and host the blackboard.com DNS zone. Now Blackboard has a finance, human resources, sales research and information technology departments. Each department has an organizational unit that contains all the accounts of the respective department. All the user account have the department attribute set to their respective department. New users are added frequently. Blackboard.com contains a user named user1. All the offices are connected by using private connections. Blackboard has a data center in Montreal and Seattle offices. Each office has a firewall that can be configured as a VPN device. All infrastructure servers are virtualized. The virtualization environment contains the server in the following table. Here we can see that we have two servers, server 1 and server 2. Here we can see the server 1 is a VMware vCenter server and the server 2 is a Hyper-V host. We can also see that the server 1 contains virtual machine 1 and the server 2 contains virtual machine 2. Now let's move ahead and see some more information on existing environment. This one says that the Blackboard uses two web applications named App1 and App2. Each instance of each web application requires 1 GB of memory. The Azure subscription contains the resources in the following table. Here we can see that we have resources here which is VNet1 virtual network 1 and then we have VM3 which is a virtual machine. Again we have one more virtual machine which is VM4. Then the question says that the network security team implements several network security groups which are also known as NSGs. Moving ahead we have the requirement section. Here we start with the plan changes and it says that Blackboard plan to implement the following changes. The first one is deploy Azure Express route to the Montreal office. The second one says migrate the virtual machines hosted on server 1 and server 2 to Azure. The third one says synchronize on premises Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. And lastly we have migrate App 1 and App 2 to two Azure web apps named Web App 1 and Web App 2. Moving ahead we have technical requirements and this one says that the Blackboard must meet the following technical requirements. The first one is ensure that the web app can adjust the number of instances automatically based on the load and can scale up to 5 instances. Second one says ensure that the virtual machine 3 or VM3 can establish outbound connections over TCP port 8080 to application servers in Montreal office. Then we have as third one ensure that routing information is exchanged automatically between Azure and the routers in the Montreal office. Fourth one says enable Azure multi-factor authentication MFA for the users in the finance department only. Fifth one is ensure that webapp2.azurewebsites.net can be accessed by using named apt 
2.blackboard.com moving ahead with the sixth one it says connect the new york office to vnet 1 over the internet by using an encrypted connection then we have seventh one which says create a workflow to send an email message when the settings of vm4 are modified eighth one says create a custom azure role named role one that is based on a reader role and then the last one the ninth one says minimize the cost wherever possible so that was all the information given in the case study we started with overview section then we moved on to the existing environment detail and lastly we studied about the technical requirements now let's move to the question and answer section and here comes the question number one based on this case study the question says that you discover that vm3 does not meet the technical requirements you need to verify whether the issues relates to the nsg what should you do here you can see the options given are diagram in vnet1 diagnostic settings in azure monitor the third option is diagnose and solve the problems in traffic manager profiles then the fourth option given is the security recommendation in azure advisor the fifth option is ip flow verify in azure network watcher now let me show you what technical requirement are we talking about here it comes we can see that as per the question we need to ensure that vm3 can establish outbound connections over tcp port 8080 to the application servers in montreal office this was given in technical requirements and now the question says that vm3 is not able to meet this technical requirement and we need to figure out whether this issue relates to the nsg on network security groups or not and the best way to do that is use the ip flow verify in the azure network watcher now let me show you the microsoft documentation on ip flow verify so here we are on the official microsoft documentation that gives you an introduction to the ip flow verify in azure network watcher here you can read that ip flow verify checks if a packet is allowed or denied to or from a virtual machine the information consists of direction protocol local ip and remote ip local port and a remote port if the packet is denied by a security group the name of the rule is denied the packet is returned then in the second para of this documentation you can read that the ip flow verify looks at the rules at all the network security groups now if you remember the question carefully the question wanted us to diagnose whether the issue was related to the nsg or not and as we read in this documentation ip flow verify can help us to do that so that's why we have chosen option e as the answer to this question now friends before moving ahead to the next question let me remind you that in earlier three parts I have shared generic guidelines from Microsoft on case studies. Along with that, I have also shared some tips and tricks that you can use while giving the exam and secure much higher grades in AZ-104 certification. The link for all the earlier parts are right there in the description box. Now let's move ahead with the second question. The question says that you need to meet the technical requirements of VM4. What should you create and configure? Your options are an Azure Notification Hub. The second option is an Azure Event Hub. The third option is an Azure Logic App. The fourth option is an Azure Services Bus. Now let me show you what were the technical requirements related to the VM4. In technical requirements section of the case study, we read that create a workflow to send email message when the setting of VM4 are modified. So that's the exact technical requirement that we have to fulfill for this question and based on this technical requirement i have chosen option b an azure event hub and option c an azure logic app as the answer for this question now let me give you my justification for that first thing we note in this technical requirement that we have to send an email when the vm4 settings are modified so basically we need to capture the modification event of a virtual machine named vm4 and to capture the events in azure we need event hub also the technical requirement says that we need to send the email message and for this we have chosen an azure logic app and friends if you want to understand the event grid and the azure logic apps then this is a very good tutorial from microsoft 
I have given the link for this tutorial in the description box. You can read whenever you have a suitable time. Now let's move ahead to the question number three. The question number three says that you need to recommend a solution to automate the configuration for the finance department users. The solution must meet the technical requirements. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Azure AD B2C. The second option is dynamic groups and conditional access policies. The third option is Azure AD identity protection. And the fourth one is an Azure logic app and the Microsoft identity management MIM client. Now let me show you the technical requirement which the question is referring to. This one comes here. It says enable Azure multi-factor authentication or MFA for the users in the finance department only. So this is the technical requirement that we have to meet. And the correct answer that I have chosen to meet this technical requirement is option B dynamic groups and conditional access policies. And friends, in case you want to understand how to enable per user Azure Active multi-factor authentication to secure sign-in events, then this is the documentation that you can refer. I will not read the entire documentation. The link is right there in the description box and you can visit this documentation whenever you have suitable time. Here comes the question number four. The question says that you need to ensure that VM1 can communicate with VM4. The solution must minimize the administrative effort. What should you do? Your options are create an NSG and associate the NSG to VM1 and VM4. Then we have established pairing between VNet1 and VNet3. The third option is assign VM4 an IP of 10.0.1.5 slash 24. And the last option is create a user defined route from VNet1 to VNet3. Now friends, to be honest, as I see this question probably have some missing information, but never mind. We have what we have and we have to make the sense out of the information that is given in this question. Now here I show you the relevant section from the case study that are related to this question. Here you can see that the VM1, VM1 is here mentioned in the question as well. So we have VM1 on the server one, which means what this means that VM1 is on the server, which is on premises. And we have to ensure the communication between VM1 and VM4. Where is VM4? VM4 is a virtual machine, which means that VM4 is essentially on Azure cloud. So hopefully now you understand that in this question, we are trying to connect an on premises machine to the machine in Azure network. And for this task, the best option is the site to site VPN connection in Azure portal. And related to that information, the best answer or the best option given in this question is option C, assign VM4 an IP of 10.0.1.5 slash 24. And friends, if you want to learn how to create a site to site VPN connection in Azure portal, then this is the Microsoft documentation. It's a very important documentation from the exam perspective because there are many questions either in the form of case studies or the regular questions on AZ104 that are related to these kind of setup. And this, my friend, is a very lengthy documentation. It's not possible for me to go through each and every details on this documentation. So I have left the documentation link in the description box. And friends, if you feel that we are doing a good work in bringing the Azure learning to you for free, please like the video. It really helps our channel to grow and bring more quality content for you to learn. And with that, we have reached to the question number five. The question says that you need to meet the connection requirements of the New York office. What should you do to answer? Select the appropriate option in the answer area. And please note that each correct selection is worth one point. So here, my friends, you have to answer on two levels. First, you have to tell what should you do on the Azure portal. And then you have to answer what should be done in the New York office. Looking at the Azure portal options, we have create an express route circuit only. Then we have create virtual network gateway only. The third option given is create virtual network gateway and a local network gateway. Fourth option is create an express route circuit and on premises data gateway. The fifth option is create virtual network gateway and on premises data gateway. And friends, the correct answer to this part of the question is to create a virtual network gateway and a local network gateway. 
Moving on with the New York office, we have deploy express route. Then the second option is deploy a direct access server. The third option is implement a web application proxy. The fourth option is create an express route circuit and on premises data gateway. The fifth option is configure a site to site VPN connection. And the correct answer for this part of the question is configure a site to site VPN connection. Now let me give you the clarification or justification for the answer we have chosen. So here it comes the justification for the first part of the question where we choose create a virtual network gateway and a local network gateway. So friends virtual network gateway is a resource that provides a virtual VPN appliance for the VNet. It is responsible for the routing of traffic from the on premises network to the VNet. And then we have local network gateway, which is an abstraction of on premises VPN appliances network traffic from the cloud applications to the on premises network is routed through this gateway. So that was the clarification of why we have chosen virtual network gateway and local network gateway. Moving on to the second part of the question where we chose configure a site to site VPN connection and friends here I have given a picture which shows you different tier but this picture is exactly not related to our answer. This is just to make you understand how to connect between on premises network to the network in the Azure cloud. So basically my friends we are connecting New York office which surely is on premises to VNet1 and VNet1 is on Azure. And once again, I will reiterate as we discussed in the question four as well. If we want to connect something on premises with that of Azure, then we need to have a site to site VPN connection. So that's why we have chosen site to site VPN connection as the answer to this question. Now let's move ahead with the question number six, which is the last question in today's case study. Let's read the question. The question says that you need to implement role one. Which command should you run before you create role one to answer select the appropriate option in the answer area. And please note that each correct selection is worth one point. So here my friends you are given with a part or a section of a command. You have to choose what comes before this command and you also have to choose what comes after this command. Now let me reveal the answer and let's see what the exact command becomes. Here you can see the first part of the command becomes get easy role definition. The middle part is already given which is dash name and reader. Then we have a pipe symbol and now comes the last part of this command which is convert to JSON. So friends the full command will look something like this which is convert easy role definition dash name reader and then we have this pipeline symbol here. The last section is convert to JSON. So that was all for today. I hope you like this interesting case study. Please do not miss to watch the earlier three parts. More case studies are coming up in the subsequent videos. So please do subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon to receive the timely notifications. And friends, please, please do like the video. It takes a lot of research to bring case studies and lot of efforts in finding the correct Microsoft documentation. Thank you so much for your precious time and learning with us. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.